Um, it's it's yeah. still we haven't established this whole brand split yet. We really haven't. We're we're only you know this will be the first joint pay per view, but let's keep it separate still because you know I don't want to get until we get to the Royal Rumble where we start seeing you know a, a slight rivalry um, and that sort of thing happens because. You know, if you have it at Survivor Series and then you're going to have it at Royal Rumble, it's like flipping hell, you know. Like, is, is, there, no, is there any point to it? I, I don't know, um, really. Uh, it just seems like everyone's having just different time slots rather than it being its own show. Um, I don't know really how much different. I, I, the only one thing I will say is so far I've been enjoying... I enjoy SmackDown's time because it's shorter. <laughs> And by the third <laughs> hour of Raw, I'm done. You know, I'm, I'm like spent as I always am. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they get around that. I like, I like the idea, Matt, that they've gone at least they're having the classic Survivor Series matches. Um, it would have been nice for them just to have two internal Survivor Series matches and then go for you know the the big one. You know, we have some of the more main eventers in it. Um, yeah. You know, and have SmackDown versus Raw. It would have been nice to have a couple of internal ones as well because there's definitely enough talent to do that um, still and, and, and just play off existing feuds. But slightly unfortunate, really, that the way it's going to happen. I think it's going to be... I just think it might... Three might just... I know that they're going to be a different style and there's going to be a women's one and all the rest of it, but it would have been nice just to have just maybe a couple of brand-only ones rather than seeing... Three lots just seems like too many, and I guarantee you, every time we get get one of the classic ones on, the commentators are going to oversell <laughs> this rivalry <laughs> that apparently there is. But, uh, by the way, I just don't get why there is a rivalry yet. Um, you know that nobody has uh, taken their own brand by the scruff of the neck and said this is how we do it. Um, not at all. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see uh, how that all works, obviously. But I, I do like the idea of the traditional Survivor Series matches, but uh, just this might be a little bit too many for my liking um, in that. Um, not not the matches itself, but just the SmackDown versus Raw going on, uh, really. But um, we'll, we'll see. Matt, uh, just as an early early thought, who do you think they give the win to, SmackDown, because they're the weaker show, or do you think they just <laughs> go bold with Raw? I... I... I would say the talent is saying Raw, but the actual desperation is saying SmackDown. <laughs> uh, um, I would say if, it, if it's just a case of like they're fighting each other for the sake of fighting each other, there's no reward in it, mm. I would say Raw wins. But if there is something at the end of this, if there is some sort of like prize to be had or people switching, then, it, then it's got to be SmackDown. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm with you there. I can't. I see. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, I think it's just too, too pro raw. I mean, if Raw takes any more talent from them as well, imagine if that happens at the end. Cool. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, so yeah, we'll see on that one. See how it goes. Um, obviously, uh, a few little uh, little bits have been coming in since we've been doing the show tonight. Little rumours as usual going up before Raw, and the uh, couple that I've got here, Matt, is that the Boogie Man is the latest WWE star to be making a possible return. Not official, obviously, but um, they're, uh, they, they are saying he's backstage. Obviously, he's done a lot of work with WWE's TV on the network. In, in, he's been involved with like the online stuff and the Swerve show. So he's always been in and around. But yes, apparently the Boogeyman is rumoured. Um, I don't know if that's a long-term thing or just a one-off, but uh, maybe it's the next Braun Strowman opponent. Who knows? Um, we'll, we'll wait and see. <laughs> eh? But um, yes, he's, he's rumoured to be there tonight. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with him, obviously. Um, talking about another return, Matt, just to go on NXT, uh, we, we we now know Mickey James is, is going to be making a return. Six years since she's last been in WWE, which seems seems a lot longer than, than perhaps what it, you know, I remember it being. But, but Mickey James, uh, obviously, she, she, had a, she had a stint in TNA as well and, you know, great talent. But um, she, she's going to be back fighting for the... The NXT Women's Title at Takeover at uh, what's that? The night night before Survivor Series, I guess. Um, are you? Uh, was you a little bit shocked by that? And, and what are you expecting in in this one? Yeah, I am a little bit shocked. I, I, it does make me wonder how how, um, how short term do they think the fans' memory are? Like, do, 
So they expect me to forget that she was like in a sort of Piggy James storyline where she actually got cake shoved in her face and she lost in that and then she was gone. She was out of the company, you know. They didn't really treat her with the uh, utmost respect that they're trying to generate now, Mm -hmm. saying that she's uh, a great women's wrestler, you know, like a a future Hall of Fame, whatever they're trying to portray her as. They didn't really do that last time she had a run there. Yeah. So, you know, um, I, I kind of am wondering why, unless this is in another case of like, Hey, look at this uh, legendary woman wrestler. That Oscar's just going to destroy her. <laughs> you know, I I can't really see the longevity in this, and I, I'm I'm by myself. You know, I, I'm hoping Oscar wins because like I'm kind of enjoying her kind of uh, her title reign and, and the way she's doing it. Yeah, I'm with you. I it, um, it caught me by surprise to, to hear that, and I. I kind of thought, well, if they bring Mickey James in, it's great for NXT. I think it's, it's, it makes more of an impact than on SmackDown. But I didn't see her going up for the title. I thought they would have her against uh, one of the other female wrestlers to sort of put them over. Similar to maybe when we saw Juicin Liger a couple of years ago at um, NXT uh, TakeOver when, when we went for the SummerSlam against Tyler Breeze, having that sort of a, that sort of a thing where it's just kind of like, um, you know, like, can't wait to see this person return after all these years. You know, just a sort of like a, 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 an attraction match, if you will. But um, the fact she's going for the title, maybe that does also show you the that they might be a little bit limited in NXT at the moment with the females. Um, because obviously they've lost quite a lot um, going up to the main roster. But, uh, you know, it's... it's it was. It's an odd one. I don't see her winning. Uh, if she wins, I'd be hugely shocked. That's all I'll say. Um, for that, but mm. I'm interested to see what she performs like. Really, um, in this day and age, in in an NXT ring, I'm um, against you know Asuka, who's a very very good uh, uh, women's wrestler. So I don't know if she's she's gonna she's gonna hold her back or, or do her good. I'm I'm not too sure what I think about that, but um, yeah, interesting nonetheless. Um, just keeping on the theme of NXT, just briefly, Matt, how, have you been impressed with? The developments of some of the newer guys that have come in, like particularly, you know, Bobby Roode, and obviously with what's going on now with, um, oh God, I forgot his blooming name. Um, the other guy that came in from TNA recently, I forgot his freaking Eric Young. Eric Young, yes, Eric Young. Um, how, how have you been sort of. <clears throat> You know, with it, with what how they've been going with their characters and, and storyline wise and, and their wrestling so far, their progress? Uh, I think now we're sort of entering the new generation of NXT, aren't we? I mean, we, we like I said, we had all the other talent go up and then there were some voids left, uh, left some empty space there. Yeah, but I think that's slowly being filled up now. You know, Bobby Roode's come in there. You know, he fits in there naturally, perfectly. You know, I think that guy can pretty much walk into any sort of show and just, like, take a spot, you know, and, and be one of the, the top guys because I think he's, he's a great talent to have. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, yeah, Eric Young, he was a bit of a question mark. We were wondering, like, what was going to happen. I mean, they've had him on contract for a long time, but they, uh, they've obviously been waiting for the right moment, you know, to bring this guy in. Um, um, I, I think faction, you know, is they haven't got too many factions going right now. So, you know, possibility of this might actually work out all right for them. You know, if they if they gel together right and they get this right, you know, there's some potential for future movement. You know, when they go up, they will be able to have rivalries with stuff like the New Day or whatever's going at the time. Yeah. Um, that might be that might be great for the future if they can uh, get a faction with some steam behind them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and uh, I guess Austin Aries is doing all right as well. You yeah, know? yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, they haven't given him as many wins as I would uh, like to see him have. But you know, I think I think now is his time to build up slowly a little bit more. So I think the talent's all there, and obviously Nakamura and Joe. So as soon as like the Nakamura Joe's feud is done, I don't have any like hesitations at all about like should be the next one one contender because there's, there's a multitude of choices there, mm-hmm. which is. A great thing to say because that means that uh, the uh, show is being run uh, quite successfully. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, we're gonna. Uh, th- I mean, that takeover already looks like a, it's going to be a nice card. Um, we don't know all the matches yet, but we've got <clears throat> well, we've got Bobby Roode against Ty Dillinger uh, as a singles. Obviously, we're going to have the the uh, tag team finale of the Dusty Roads happening as well. Uh, was it? It's all we know is it's sanity, isn't it, at the moment? That are in that, yeah. and then um, obviously the, the women's match, and obviously Shinsuke Nakamura, Samoa Joe. We, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, for me, Joe, I just think, God, just get him up there already. 
Um, you know, this guy's one of the ones that seems to have been forgotten about. But um, I'm hoping not too much longer, Matt, um, because mm. uh, you know I'd hate for him to win it back all of a sudden. Because I think this this guy is is more than ready to to take a, a, a step in the direction of the main roster, um, to be quite honest with you. But uh, uh, are you, uh, so far, we're looking at going into that club, because I think it's going to be quite a big deal. They're going into, you know, to Canada, Toronto. It's going to be quite a, a big show, and for them to get them in Canada for the first time, so they want to do something big. Do you, do you think it's panning out quite well at the moment? Uh, yeah, it's, it's shaped up nicely. I mean, like we, like we previously mentioned, uh, the Oscar match is uh, it's a bit out of nowhere, isn't it? But, you know, yeah. it's still good because it's... Uh, it's uh, Something you wouldn't normally expect to see, so that straight away would draw some attention. Uh, Nakamura Joe, that's been building up nicely, so that'll be a great attraction there as well. I'm assuming we're getting some sort of Bobby Roode Ty Dillinger thing coming up here. I'm not sure how yeah, great that will be. I think that's going to happen. Know. Yeah, I think that's going <laughs> to happen. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that nonetheless. It'll be a great weekend for us as well on the on the podcast because we'll, we'll probably have like a long weekend of uh, a few extra shows. I think for this one. Um, looking forward to doing that, um, and also I'm looking forward to just covering one pay per view. <laughs> I, I really am. I've uh, I got, these two a month of uh, are getting to me slightly. Uh, talking about the next pay per view, Matt Hell in a Cell. We, we haven't really spoke about it that much. I don't know if that's a, a telltale sign, but uh, we've got Hell mm. in a Cell coming up. Well, what is it? Not this week. The week after, is it? Goodness me. Yeah. Uh, seems to come around so fast and. You know, looking at the matches on paper, Matt, um, I'm hoping this is going to be better than the last SmackDown one we saw. Let's put it that way. But we're going <laughs> to we're going to have the, what the new day against the the new the new team of Cesaro and Sheamus. Um, yeah. Just to talk about New Day, Matt, I've had a few emails in saying people feel like they've gone a little bit flat. That maybe WWE they're just they're just holding this record business out. They just want to get them over the line to to take Demolition over because Demolition recently have been putting in some uh, some lawsuits against WWE. So, you know, the, the, the way WWE to kind of give a middle finger there is to have New Day take their record. Um, from where they're at now, Matt, do you just have New Day breaking this record? I mean, would it all be for nothing if they suddenly just drop it now? Um, well, that's an interesting one there because I, I'm not really bored of New Day yet, you know. And I think if they are going for this record kind of thing, then, you know, just go with it. Don't actually do what they did to Nikki Bella and, and you know, and just oh, like have God, a yeah. just reach the finish line and then drop the title. Mm. That, that to me kind of feels pathetic, you know. It's just That's just a blatant, like, middle finger to the previous longest reigning champion. <laughs> um, don't do that kind of thing because that's just too obvious. You know, New Day are telling you, they don't need to just like break a record just to be in the history books Mm -hmm. you know set a new record go the distance um i'm not too sure seamus and cesaro are the ones to take the title of them anyway Mm -hmm. so i'm not really too uh, feeling too much threat there i think they make an all right tag team but as is the case for seamus and cesaro for a long time now it just feels like what do we do with these guys you know oh we've got two guys we don't know what to do with uh, just stick them together yeah. um, but that was um, emphasised by the best of seven match mm. do we really need sure. to see seven matches of that not no. really <laughs> yeah just a case of we don't know what to do with these guys so hopefully if they uh, if they've gone this far the new day they still have belief in them Yes. Um, yeah, other matches that are going to come up on this, I uh, just want to talk about, obviously, now Kevin Owens um, versus Seth Rollins, um, which is going to be inside Hell in a Cell for the Universal Championship. Matt, in my feeling on this going in is that Seth Rollins kind of needs to win here, doesn't he? I mean, it's making. I, I don't know who needs it more right now because it, it's going to look a little bit shocking if he doesn't, you know, he's done all this build. I'm surprised they've gone with another match between these two. I thought they would have cut it loose and waited for a little bit longer. But they they seem destined to, to, to obviously have him in this. And, um, and and Kevin Owens, who's sort of quite newly crowned, and I'm enjoying his stuff. I, I like what he's doing on the mic, especially with Jericho. I think that's, that's one of the best chemistries they've had in WWE for a long time, probably since the New Day, that I've really enjoyed. I... I I really enjoy seeing that. It's the little subtleties that Jericho will do, like the little things when he says, you know, the I think he said something like um, the, 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 the undisputed, and then he's like, no, universal championship. 
Um, you know, just just adds those little things. And you know, for me, there's there's room, Matt, to have possibly a Jericho Owens breakup and and even have a match between the two uh, before Jericho. 